Good day everyone, Chris Mayor Bishop here. A little star for the show. This little fella. This is from the family Anteresia. This is a children's python. And this is actually a ghost male. As you can see he's basically no patterning. We're going to do a whole segment on these little guys. Um, why they're so popular. Um, they're actually named children's pythons. Not because they're ideal for children. It's only the guy that discovered them. Surnames was children name. But uh, we'll leave that for a different segment on breeding these guys. Keeping them. They're pretty simple to keep. Easy to breed and they're just in general a fantastic snake. Believe it or not, this is an adult male and this is one of our breeding males. Okay, so today thing, today's thing I want to discuss is heating options. What you can look at, the do's and the don'ts. Um, in South Africa, we're pretty limited on the heating options that we've got. So we've got two choices we can go. We can either do basking spots or belly heat. Um, belly heat, very straightforward. That's probably the most popular version in South Africa. Um, is by simple means of a heating pad. So that's that thin aluminium foil one, the wires in it. You get the black ones, you can actually dim um, the thermostat on it. So there's quite a few options on that. Um, I'm a personal fan of ceramic heating matters. The reason for ceramic heating matters is they create a great basking spot, but they also create ambient temperature within the cage to heat up the entire cage for you, um, especially in your colder climates. Um, <clears throat> and also, Let's start from the top. Ceramic heating methods works great. There's no light source that um, interferes with the um, photogenic period of the snake. So he knows when it's nighttime and daytime. Um, we'll actually discuss that in a different lecture at one stage. Um, but very important with any heat source is you need to protect the snake from the heat source. Um, they don't feel when they're getting burned. So by the time they realize something's wrong, it's too late. And you're sitting either with a dead snake or say snake that's gonna have severe belly burns. Um, like I said, I'm a personal preference of these guys for the pure reason of ambient temperature. Um, and they create a fantastic basking spot. Um, belly heat, the heating pads, they work great. I think that's what we used to all our lives. The only problem I have with it, with uh, a heating pad, it only creates a small little hot spot. So the rest of the cage um, will remain cool. And that doesn't give the snake the opportunity to move up and down as it wants to. It's now forced to stay in that area. Um, even if it's a little bit too hot or too cold, he's forced to stay there because of that heat. That's the only heat source he's got. So as you guys know, snakes are, they aren't cold blooded as, as we refer to them. They're actually ectothermy. So they rely on outside temperatures to regulate their body functions. So they need heat to thrive and to um, digest food. Um, without that, the rat, the rat or mouse or whatever it ate is just going to um, rot inside of them. So, the most important thing, doesn't matter what heat source you go for, it must be regulated. And by that, I mean with the thermostat. The thermostat is a device that actually controls a set temperature. So, you set the thermostat at 32, that's the maximum temperature it will go. So, it will go up to 32 and will actually switch off automatically. So, whatever heat source you use... Make sure you've got control of that heat source, and the only way you can do that is with a the thermostat. And we've got quite a wide variety in South Africa. We've got from entry level, a couple of hundred rand, all the way to thousands of rand. Just depends on what level you want to go. Um, for these gauges, I use a very simple thermostat um, that just switches on and off. Nothing fancy about them. For my black edits and the green tree pythons, I actually use what they call a dimmer It actually regulates the wattage to your heating element. And these computers, you can actually adjust that you have a nighttime and a daytime temperature. So I can cool down in the winter times for my breeding cycles, but not to the extent where it's fatal for the snake. So I can set my nighttime temperatures at, let's say, for example, 20 degrees, and daytime I push it up to 28 degrees and gives them a nice cycle. Summertime, I run it right through all the same. Um, things to look out for. Um, and this is just personal opinion and preference that I've learned over the years. If you get those heat pads that's got the little dimmer at the back, I found them to be a little bit unreliable. Um, if, you, if you work them too much or you try and flex them too much, they do tend to break. Um, so I don't find it as a, as a reliable heat source. It's a short-term solution, but for some, for some people, they work great. The aluminum foil pads, they work fantastic, but when you glue them down, just make sure that you glue the entire thing down properly because what can happen is a little corner goes up, the snake goes over it, actually can get stuck to that. So that's something you need to watch out for. The same with the ceramic heating methods. As much as I love them, you must have a cage around them and your wiring go to the back 
And this goes for all your heating elements going to the cage. Make sure that wiring is silicone down or pinned down to a way where the snake can't be get between the enclosure and the wiring, which will actually rip everything apart. A big no-no, and this is something that actually got discovered uh, not long ago, infrared heat, uh, the ceramic, uh, not ceramic, the, the infrared heat bulbs. A couple of reasons. Number one, we have discovered they actually interfere with the folks, with the, the snake's photogenic period. So it does see that light, it does feel that light. And if you regulate with the thermostat, it switches on and off, on and off, and they tend to break in a very short time period. So not recommended. I'm not a fan. If, if it works for you, like I've said in my previous um, video, if it works for you, don't fix it. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. But it's just what studies has proven to us. And so that's just something to look out for. But that's basically it. And then when you're setting up your heat source, always on the one side, you'll see all my cages is always off center. So I create a hot spot and a cold side. Putting it in the center is not going to give you the desired effect that you need of a hot side and a cold side. It's going to give an overall um, ambient temperature, but the basking spots I prefer it on, on the one side. And another thing what you can do, you can actually put a ledge under the basking spot with a height. So you can actually choose on the, on the rock, it will be, for example, or on the height, it will be 34, 35, and actually get snakes basking under that heat. And then inside the height box, it will be maybe 32, and then right next to it, um, 30, and then as, as it goes to the cooler side, it can go, depending on the cage size and, and the ambient room temperature, um, it can go down to 24, 23 sometimes, which is great. That's what you want. You want to see a snake that moves up and down. Then you know you're doing it right. Um, there's not a set formula on the wattage that you need to use, but we tend to over what or overpower our heat source. Um, these little units, you can see how small they are. I've got a 60 watt and a 40 watt um, in them. In these guys, I'm running 100 watts, and I'll tell you what, that's already too much. That's why we've got the thermostat regulating that. If I had to leave this without a thermostat, that side will get well over 50, 60 degrees. Um, for this type of cage, I'll even go 60 watt, maybe, maybe 80 watts, but I won't go over that. Um, but once again, thermostats, they are crucial. Um, you can um, distribute thermostats. So these two enclosures are running off one thermostat, and these three enclosures are running off one thermostat. So you can combine them, but you can't do 10 or 20 units. That's just overloading the units. All right, so that's just a little discussion on, on heat and the different options that you've got. Hope that helps. If there's anything I missed, um, please give your input on it, and we'll take it from there. All right, guys, have a great day. Cheers.